evaluating functions. Hey guys, so today is another day to learn, and now I will be discussing on evaluating functions. But before I start, I would like to do a quick recap regarding functions and relations. So, recalling function, function is a relation where each element in the domain is related to only one value in the range by some rule. Relation is a rule that relates values from a set of values called domain to a second set of values called the range. There are four types of relation. One to many, many to one, one to one, many to one. There are two things that we basically need to remember. Number one is that to remember that all functions are relations. Number two, not, not all relations are functions and that one to one and many to one can be considered as functions. There are many different ways on how to express functions and relations. We have set of ordered pairs, composed of two coordinates, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. In a set of ordered pairs, the domain are the set of all x-coordinates, while the range is the set of all the y-coordinates. For example, we need to determine if this given set of ordered pairs is a function or merely a relation, and identify the domain and range and need to state the rule for the given functions. Example, there's 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 2, 2, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, 4, 4, and 4, negative 4. In this example, we could tell that this is a relation since the x is repeated. The domain is 1, 2, 3, 4, while the range is 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, 4, and negative 4. Always remember that the domain is x and the range is y. That's how we get the domain and the range given in the equation above. Lastly is the rule. The rule in this example is y in absolute value is x because that's what suits the first equation. There is another way how to express functions and relations. This is through the table of values. More or less, it's just a set of ordered pairs that is written in the table of values, still composed of x and y coordinates. The x coordinates are written on the first row and below are the y coordinates. We need to transform the following given set of ordered pairs into the table of values. So, for example, c equals 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 2, 2, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, 4, 4, and 4, negative 4. You just put it in the table. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4. We just don't do, we don't repeat the numbers in x that are the same. And then y, all the numbers are present. There are many more ways to express functions and relations like mapping and graphing, but that's not our focus for today. Now that we have finished our recap, let's proceed to our topic for today, which is evaluating functions. The question is, how do you evaluate a function? The common notation of function is usually written down as f x. It means that f is some expression involving the variable x. Don't think of this too literally, that is f being multiplied to x. Instead, consider it as a mathematical expression, which is read as f is a function of x or f is some expression involving the variable x. Functions can also be written in different ways, using variables such as gx, hx, or even kx. In addition, functions may other use other input values than x, like fa, hr, or km. The key idea is to always remember that the variable outside of the parentheses is the name of the function, while the variable inside the parentheses is the input value of the function. Like algebraic expressions, functions can also be evaluated. When we say evaluated, it means solving for the numerical value of each given function. The process on how we evaluate algebraic expressions will be applied wherein we substitute the given numerical value for each given variable and we simplify the resulting expressions. So again, evaluating functions means finding the value of fx or y. That can correspond to the given value of x. To do this, simply replace x variables with whatever x has been assigned. For example, so let's try another example. Example number two. 2k squared minus 5k plus 1 when k equals to 3. Observe that the function here is h and the input value is k. Just like in our previous example, we want to substitute whatever the numerical value assigned to k into the given function and simplify. So, hk 3 equals 2, 3 squared minus 5, 3 plus 1. 
So we should just solve now. So 3 squared is 9, so that's 2 times 9, minus 5, negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, plus 1, which is then 18 minus 15 plus 1, which equals to 4. So then you just write here. Let's try another example. Given that px equals to 4x minus 1 over x, evaluate that p1 minus p negative 1. This problem may look intimidating at first, but once we already analyze it and apply what we already know, this shouldn't be that bad. What we need to do here is to evaluate the function at x equals 1, then subtract it by the value of the function when evaluated x minus 1, or negative 1. Be very careful when you substitute the values during the simplification process. If you are not careful in every step, it is easy to commit mistakes when you add, subtract, multiply, or divide positive and negative numbers. Our solution looks something like this. P1 minus P negative 1. All right. So 4, 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 4, negative 1 minus 1 over negative 1 because the p here is this p and this is that p so that would equal to 4 minus 1 over 1 4 negative 4 over negative 1 this would then more equal to 3 1 negative 5 over negative 1. There's still that subtraction sign here. That would equal to 3 minus 5. I put the final answer here. Our final answer would be p1 minus p negative 1 equals to negative 2. That's it. It's easy. Okay, let's try another example. Let's say this one. Given the function fx equals to f x squared minus 2 square root x plus 7. So when x equals to negative 3. So let's substitute. So that equals to f 3 negative 3 equals to 5 negative 3 squared minus 2 negative 3 plus 7 and then the square root. So then now we just simplify. Equals 2 9, it's 5 times 9, minus 2, 4. Why is it 4? It's negative 3 plus 7 equals to positive 4. That would equal to not 5 times 9 is 45, minus 4 equals to 41. That's our final answer. So let's have the last and final example. Given gx equals x squared minus 3x plus 1, where we find g, 2x minus 1. In the previous examples, we have been evaluating a function by a number. This time, the input value is no longer a fixed numerical value, but instead an expression. It might look complicated, but the procedure remains the same. We will replace, well, first we have to write the expression out once more, x squared minus 3x plus 1. We have to first replace it with 2x minus 1, so g 2x minus 1 equals 2x minus 1 squared minus 3 2x minus 1 plus 1. Then we'll simplify by squaring, so that will just equal to 4x squared minus 4x plus 1, and then 3, because then you, you would do the full method with the binomials here, but then here you would just distribute that, so that would be minus 6x plus 3 plus 1. So then, add the similar terms, 4x squared minus 10x plus 5. So 4, negative 4, or minus 6x, negative 10x, 1 is 3, plus 1 is 5. And that's the answer, 2x minus 1. So 
final answer. So that's easy, right? I'm kidding. I know you know you might find this hard at first, but as time goes by, I'm sure you will understand this lesson and would be thinking that it'd be easy. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you understand this topic on how to evaluate functions. Should you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment down below. See you all soon.